in our last tutorial, we went over exit codes, uh, which is, you know, viewing whether the last command ran successfully or not. Um, and uh, if you haven't watched that video, I suggest watching it. Uh, if you're uh, checking out the playlist, it should be the video right before this. Or you can just go to my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description of this video. And uh, go to the video section and just do a search for exit codes, two words, and it should be one of the videos that comes up. So uh, after you've watched that and you understand how exit codes work, and most exit codes are either zero or one, whether it was successful or not at running, um, we can then uh, look at uh, the previous command and say, run this next command if thing, the last command executed successfully. Um, so here's an example. We'll say, um, just like last time, we'll, we'll set uh, x equal to cat. So if we echo out cat, or x, sorry, echo out x, uh, yeah, echo out the variable x, we get the word cat. Now, if we put brackets and we say um, dollar sign x equals, and then in quotation, cat, and remember to have these spaces where I have spaces because it won't work properly if you don't. Um, it's checking the value of cat right there. It should be true. So we should get an exit code of zero. So if I echo dollar sign question mark, we get an exit code of zero. But let's say we want to display something to the screen if that ends up being true. So I'm gonna hit up arrow twice here to go back up two commands that I've typed. So we're checking this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you might, you might know that if you put an ampersand, the little end symbol there, um, that will throw this command in the background and start running the next command. Well, if you do two of them in a row, what that says is run this next command if the last command executed successfully, which would be an exit code of zero. So I can then say echo x is cat. So if I hit enter here, we get x is cat. But if we go back up and change this to something like dog, so now it's checking right here, is x equal to dog? And then saying, well, if that's true, then do this. Well, it's not true, so we shouldn't get any output here, which we don't. So what we can do here is, this is basically a simplified if-then statement in this particular case. We're going to say, you know, if this is true, then do this. If it's not true, then we're going to do this. Or, so these are two pipe symbols. You may know one pipe symbol takes the output of a command and puts it into another command. Well, in this case, doing two pipe symbols, it's kind of like saying or. So if x equals dog, or x equals dog, yeah, and then do this, which it isn't. If it doesn't equal dog, then we'll say echo, well, that's not true. And that's what we get in this particular case. Let's look at it again. So we know that x equals cat. We set that up here. So x equals cat. Here's saying, well, if x equals dog and it's true, then echo, this is a cat. So really, that's not, that's not proper. We probably should change that. Let's say, because that doesn't make sense. Let's say, OK, in this case, if x equals cat, then echo x equals cat, or x is cat. Otherwise, echo, well, that's not true. So in this case, if I enter, it should say x is cat. So that's what we're checking. Now, if we were to change the value of x, we say x equals dog in this case. Now, x does not no longer equal cat. So when we check, does x equal cat? Well, if it does, echo x is cat. But since it doesn't, what's going to happen is we're going to get echo, well, that's not true. So since we know right here that x equals dog, we know that it doesn't equal cat. So this time when I run the command, I should get this output. Well, that's not true. So basically, it's a quick little one-liner if you're going to do a short little if-then statement. This is a quicker way to do it. There's also other uh, uh, ways to use this, uh, you know, if x it is true. We can, uh, a lot of times, people, if you're running a Debian-based system, um, and you have aptitude installed, you can, although you can do the same thing with apt-get. We can say like something like sudo 
aptitude update, which will update your repository list. And then we can say end end or ampersand ampersand pseudo aptitude. Oops. Uh, upgrade. So basically what this command is doing, sudo, we know basically you're running uh, with elevated privileges there, uh, which you would have to to update and install because you're modifying the actual system. We're saying run aptitude and update the list. Then we're saying, well, if that was successful, so if you successfully retrieved all list, then what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade all packages that need to be upgraded. But see, if this was to fail because maybe your internet connection went down or you have, you have the wrong servers in your source list pack, um, it would not try to upgrade because cause obviously something's wrong. So that's, that's a practical use for this. Um, and then you could, you could say, or echo, it failed. So that would, you know, if... If this was to fail, instead of upgrading, it would then say it failed, so you know. You could also clear the screen, I guess, and then do that. So anyway, that is a quick look at, um, at uh, checking uh, the exit code of something uh, and, and, and then continuing if it was successful or doing something else if it was unsuccessful. Uh, we're going to use this again in the next tutorial, so hopefully you understand it. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Definitely, definitely, um, if you like this video, if you like these topics, uh, give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Comment below if you have comments. Um, if you have questions that are technical questions that might take more than a sentence or two to answer, um, I ask that you don't put the question in the comments because that's a horrible place to have an ongoing conversation. Can't put links in there, URLs in there. So a better place would be to go to my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Click on the social network and go down to IRC and check out our IRC channel, which is on the Freenode server. So if you already use an IRC client, you can you go to Freenode and just go to Pound Films by Chris, the Films by Chris channel. Once again, Chris is spelt with a K. All that information is in the description. And it's just a more efficient way of answering technical questions. But if you have comments, feel free to leave, leave those below. Try not to be too mean. And once again, I thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day.